Good evening, it's Brian at Fitzpatrick's Garage, Dublin Road, Kildare. I'm going to show you this, this, this Honda HRV. This is a 1.6 diesel ES model. Get out of the way, Brian. Um, so, as you were saying, 1.6 diesel ES model. This one's kind of unusual because it actually has satellite navigation and they never come with satellite navigation. The car has about 14, 15,000 kilometers on it and it's got a fleet discount because of it, so you'll see the price from a brand new one has been discounted because of that. It's in what's called a Morpho blue colour. Just in case you're wondering, we are Fitzpatrick's Calair. Brian's my name. If you come to look at the car, 086-843-1945. Give me a ring, I'll tell you how to get here. And when you come to the garage, just ask for Brian. The garage is located in Calair town. We are about 30 minutes south of Dublin. We're just off the M7 motorway, so if you're familiar with the Kildare Village shopping outlet, we are about three minutes from there, between junctions 12 and 13 off the M7 motorway. There's a Maxall there, there's a Honda garage here, obviously because you're looking at a Honda HRV. There's also a Hyundai garage here, and further up the road on the other side, Little, there's a Mercedes garage, so it's all part of the same group. And then we have garages in Tullamore and Carlo and also Nace. Um, so, anyway, this car here used to belong to, actually, Honda Ireland. So, one of the staff members up there was driving the car. So, it is now for sale. As we were saying, it is a 1.6 diesel ES model, and it's Morpho Blue, and it has sat-nav, which is really, really nice Garmin sat-nav, because it's really not an option. You can do a factory order on them with satellite navigation, but it takes forever. So. Uh, it's kind of rare to get them with it. Uh, the car is, as we were saying, 14,000 kilometres or so, and it is in very nice condition, but you'd expect that, like it's a nearly new car. Uh, unfortunately, it's just in, so I haven't really had a chance to clean it up, so I do apologise. I am showing you this car as it is right now, but it's extremely presentable uh, even before we get a chance to clean it. Right, 1.6 diesel engine, that engine there is 120 horsepower with about 300 newton metres of torque. It is a torquey motor to say the least. And the other cool thing is it's 190 euros a year for road tax. And the chassis on these cars is actually developed on the Honda Jazz, which is a, a well built chassis, but it's light. And the idea is that we'll say because of that you're saving weight. So this car, no problem at all whatsoever, 70 plus miles per gallon, easy which is somewhere in the region of four to four and a half litres per hundred kilometres. Don't take my word for it, I have customers that I'm sure if I ring them and ask them and just say, you know, can you validate your mileage, they'll do no problem. So in all the SUVs that we sell, I think this is the most economical. Actually, it is the most economical one. And the nice thing is this engine is cool. It's got a nice bit of uh, torque, get up and go with it. So there's a six speed gearbox, which is quite a nice gearbox actually. It's got some nice crisp changes. And then if we say, for example, floor the car, so we're going to floor it right now from 30 kilometers an hour. There we go. Car pulls along really, really well. Oh my God, that sun is so nasty. Um, but anyway, as we see from that, wow. As we see from that, there is quite a nice bit of power. It is, as we were saying, 120 horsepower. It's frugal, it's easy on road tax, and it's very reliable. So I think overall so far it's fair to say it's going to be a nice car to drive. You don't have to take my word for it, come to the garage, I challenge you, drive the car and come back and say it's not a nice car to drive. It is a nice car to drive, it's lovely. And then in terms of the running costs, it's nice to have a car that's nice to drive, but it's also easy to run. So anyway, back to practicalities of the car, just while we're on the outside. Car is all original, so quarter panel, two doors, all in nice condition throughout. Driver's wing in nice condition. Front bumper is in nice condition all the way around and then down the passenger side of the car quarter panel, two doors sorry, wing quarter panel, two doors, all nice condition and around onto the rear bumper and boot lid all very nice, again as we were saying it has to be cleaned those wheels are 17 inch alloy wheels actually i tell you what's nice about them they have a nice polished finish so when it's just a little bit of tar. Um, nice polished finish so when artificial light shines in them they look really nice and shiny and the other thing as well is when it's sunny there's a nice reflection off them so they look really well. That is the most curved wheel on an alloy car ever. The front left that's where people bang it off the curb. This one's really good. So no problems there and then around to the other side. Driver's front wheel and driver's rear wheel all very good. Um, the car itself on the bonnet one or two small little stone chips. You will get that any car that's ever on a fleet. 
it's the nature of a car they will pick up little stone chips on the bonnet but nothing there that I would think would turn anyone off the car so after that then on the rear of the car there is LED tail lights and brake lights indicators in through here while we're back here let's just have a quick look at the boot which is actually quite big one thing about the um, HRV it is in the smaller segment of the SUVs so the boot is nice and big and then underneath here it's got more storage or alternatively you can put a spare wheel but nice big deep storage area in through there that is flexible which some people say oh you know I'm not sure about that I tell you lads if you've got a load of crap in your car you will actually see why these work because some people like the harder sort of finish on the back tray and I can totally understand that but if you go on holidays with a girlfriend like mine and there's so much stuff in the back of the car you will actually start to see why that is great because you can put loads of stuff that's higher up but it's still covered over for privacy so I promise you it actually does have a practicality uh, rear door handle hidden so sometimes people wonder if it's three or five doors the whole idea is that it gives a sportier look to the rear C, uh, sorry, the rear um, C pillar back there. Okay, rear of the car, as you'd expect, absolutely perfect. Nice chrome surround around the speaker and around the door handle, and then child locks over here, electrics for rear windows. The seat, sorry, it's actually getting dark. How is it getting dark already? It looks like it's bright. I'm just going to open this other door. Look at that. It actually looks kind of bright out, but this iPod does not do well in those kind of circumstances. Come on, focus. Anyway. Seats are in nice condition, floor is in nice condition, floor in nice condition, seat in nice condition. Isofix for child seats here, Isofix over here for child seat, armrest which is retractable in the rear. Everyone has a three point safety belt, everyone has a head restraint in the back. And then the seats are kind of cool because you can have them like that or you can fold them down and have them nice and flat like that. And then these two little guys here pop down and it's a whole large storage area in the back or you can have them like that so that means you have a massive bit of storage here but it's low so if you want to lift something awkward and put it into the car this little way of doing it is quite low and you can transport quite tall objects then so that's the idea of what's called magic seats while we're here carpets are perfect as you'd imagine and then a little bit of storage in here with a 12 volt outlet back there and a kangaroo pocket over here for storage. Just before we go to the front of the inside of the car, I'd better go around here because this camera's just not doing well in this light. Anyway, front fog lights over here as you see. Um, usual headlight structure on the front. Those headlights are automated, which means that, yes, they come on when it gets dark, which you'd imagine, but they're also auto dip. So if you meet some traffic, they'll dip. If you go into an unlit area, they go back into full function all by themselves, which is pretty cool. There's some sensors up here that guide that, and then there's also automatic wipers as well. So when it rains, they will basically operate uh, depending on how much moisture is falling on that sensor up there. And that sensor's got one other function as well, which is really cool. So under 32 kilometers an hour, if the car detects that you're about to impact an object and you haven't applied the brakes, the car will apply the brakes to reduce the crash impact. And probably under 32 kilometers an hour, you'll have a fairly good chance of not hitting that object. This here is a cat that I think actually lives at the garage. I see him every single night. He's not friendly, but he is here every single night. Haven't given him a name yet, so if you have any ideas, let me know. Uh, anyway, so one other thing then on that is it's got full closure. And the other thing about auto lights is they turn off themselves. So if you lock the car and walk away from it, the Lights will turn off after about 30 seconds. One other thing I want to show you is a uh, full closure function as well. So basically with a full closure function, come on lights, do your thing. So this will allow you to get into your house basically. Now lights have gone off, I come back out to the car, I open it up, lights are back on. Uh, if I open up the car, I can hold the button here and it lets my windows down. Similarly then, I can let my window up and that has brought back my windows and also my wing mirrors are now retracted but if I walk over to the car and open up my chrome door handle here this wing mirror now pops back out anyway let's have a look on the inside so just saying electrics for windows mirrors over here door card is perfect driver seat is perfect passenger seat is perfect 
and then over here the floor is perfect as is this one here it just needs a bit of hoovering from my feet but um just all normal kind of stuff okay in through here a little bit of storage armrest that moves backwards or forwards the drinks holders in through here that we can close off and we can also make deeper if we want so press the button press the button and they come back so if you want you know small drink big drink whatever it is automatic park brake it is bone contention for some people some people like it some people hate it uh, promise you everyone that hates it eventually gets to like it because the thing about it is I release my handbrake and I move forwards or backwards I finish my journey I engage so really it's not really any different I lift the handbrake or I let it off but the cool thing with these is if you oops, put on your safety belt uh, the whole idea of these is convenience so my safety belt is on I'm not going to touch that button there I'm just going to go for first foot in the throttle and now it's released and now we're moving so that's the idea of that it's easier I promise you there's also a brake hold down through here which if I press that it's going to stop me rolling backwards on hills but regardless or if, if I do that or not the car will hold itself for about three seconds so if I go up to a hill and the car looks to roll backwards there is a hill assist that'll stop me rolling backwards the brake hole down there is also a function that permanently stops you from rolling backwards for a whole journey, but after a while you'll become proficient. Three seconds is forever to get your foot from the brake to the clutch. No problem. Uh, after that, heating controls are really straightforward, so warm and cold, touch and swipe, all very easy to use mode for you want the air to blow, front and rear windscreen demisters, and they also demist these wing mirrors, which is dead handy when you're joining a motorway in the winter in the mornings, automatic to get you to whatever temperature you want. That's cool. Uh, okay, after that then we have this screen which is blank, so I'm going to go home, I'm going to press OK and we have all these functions. Again, it's Android powered, so touch and swipe. Uh, navigation, which as we were saying is super rare and on this one here, so Garmin set up, really easy to use and it's also got updates on it, great. After that then, mobile phone stuff for making calls and audio in through here, which means you can use music through Bluetooth or you can use... Oh, God, that is... One thing I will say, that's a little bit awkward where it is. I'm not going to lie to you. USB, USB, HDMI, play video, and then auxiliary output. Just to put that into perspective, that is there. So, it's just a bit of a reach to get at it. It's fine. Once you get used to it, no problem. Um, after that then, trip information in through here. And also, just general settings. Aha means you can listen to any internet radio station on the planet. And in here there's other cool functions. One of them being a browser. If you basically set up a hotspot off your phone, it will use your phone's data and you can go surf the internet. Which is pretty cool through there. So again, all Android powered. If I drive forward towards this window, we've also got parking sensors, which is telling me here I got a problem. And then similarly, if I go backwards, we have a audible noise. It's going to make noise and... Not the bang now, obviously, the sensors. Um, okay, where am I? Going backwards here. Right, this is weird. Oh, it's not, okay. Uh, there we go. So, um, approaching object behind, and it gives me two or three feet, even when it comes in. And the other thing as well, it also gives you a warning over there. So look, you really have no excuse if you crash into something. Um, okay, Bluetooth, which is voice activated up through here. Uh, trip information in through here, average speed, fuel efficiency, how much fuel is left in the tank and the cool thing is it tells you the current speed zone that you're in as well. Down through here, traction control is always on, that just keeps basically grip on the wheels that have the most amount of grip and takes power away from those that lose grip uh, in wet conditions, so it's always on, you never need to worry about it. That's turn off the alarm, that's turn off the parking sensors. Lane change warning, you drift over, say, a white line, that's, okay, in this case, an imaginary one. You drift over a white line on the road, and the car will warn you to say you've drifted over the line. Economy, you press that button on. This round white circle turns green when you're driving economically, and white when you're not. It also reduces how aggressive your throttle response is, how aggressive your cruise control is, and how aggressive your air conditioner is in favour of fuel economy when that button is on. Cruise control with a speed limiter, so you can set and maintain speed. Wipers are automated, as we're saying, headlights are automated as well. Safety-wise, driver's airbag, passenger airbag, side of this seat has an airbag, curtain airbag up high, the um, driver's side of the car has the same thing, airbag up along through here, airbag all the way down the side of the, the curtain basically going from front to rear, which is cool. And then you have side impact protection bars, after that then, anti-lock brakes, which means you have full braking pressure, sorry, 
full control of the steering under full braking pressure, emergency brake assist, emergency brake distribution, which again is involved in moving around grip to the wheels that have the most amount of grip um, at the time, depending on what kind of surface you're on. Anyway, that car is 171. It's got a warranty until January of 2020. It's got AA cover until 2020. It's a really, really nice, what's called Morpho blue color. And it's what's called the ES diesel model. As you're saying, 190 year for road tax, uh, 70 plus miles per gallon, which is four, four and a half liters. Uh, well equipped car, reliable. And you know what? They're not absolutely everywhere. That's what's nice about them. They're a little bit different, but they look, um, they have a nice expensive look about them still. So uh, as a package overall, I think they're really, really nice. And actually they're well priced. Uh, compared to uh, the competition that's on the market for them. So, if you would like information on this car, please do give me a call. Brian is my name. If you want anything uh, information wise before you come here, please do give me a call 086 843 1945. If you come to the garage, just ask for Brian. We can do trade ins uh, for the car you have. We can also offer you finance figures because we deal with all the major lenders, so our finance rates are competitive. I'm trying to get this car in the camera without getting in the way. Um, Hopefully this car is of interest. If you managed to watch the whole video, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for taking time to watch, and hopefully this one's of interest to you.